Okay, so let's take a look at um, Decagon. All right, so how many options for the first letter? Seven. Seven. Next letter? Six. Next letter? Five. Next letter? Four. Then three, then two, then one. Right, everybody on board with that? Yeah. Good. Worth arranging them. So arranging them, you're picking all of them, you're just putting, you're just putting them in any order. All right, so um, I don't care what that is. Just you know, write down whatever that is. Equals. So on the exam, you'll need to write what it is. Um, I don't have time. Well. All right, somebody give it to me, that's fine. 5,040. What was it? 5,040. Okay. Great. Um, how many different four-letter permutations can be made from the letters? If you cannot reuse them. So how many options for the first spot? Seven. Seven, all right, seven letters in Decagon. Then six for the next spot, for the next spot. Uh, and for the last spot, four. Okay, what do I do with these numbers? Let's buy them. It's 20, 42, 500, 840. What if you could reuse letters? Then how many options would you have for the first letter? Seven. seven. How many options for the second letter? Seven. 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 Third letter? Seven. Last letter? Seven. So this would just be the same thing as seven to the fourth power. Good. Everybody okay with that part? Do you guys see why it's seven and not six? Yes. So it can be used, right? So it's like the pin code. I could do zero, 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 zero if I wanted to. Not a good pin, but possible, yeah. Does it matter if we do it this way or we just do it the formula if way, like write out the permutation, or do we have to do both or like either? You could do, if you want to do the long way, so you say you want to do um, seven times six times five times four times three times two times one divided by uh, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1? Yeah, I suppose. Just like the way like the permutation formula is written on the notes. Right. Like that, so. Um, or sorry, I guess it's just the 3. 3 times 2 times 1? Is that right? I think yeah. that is. Yeah. yeah. You could do it that way if you wanted to. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. I just like to skip that because it's just, I'm lazy and I don't like to. Fair. And plus, it's a formula, then you got to memorize the formula. And I'm against memorizing formulas because I just, I don't, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> like the formulas are burning my brain. So well, it's, it's just waste space in my brain. It's something I have to memorize. It's, what's the point of that? Like names, I understand that, right? But like formulas, what's that? Okay. So, all those things we covered are all just regular fundamental accounts of counting, counting principles. So that's it. This one's a little bit weird. If order doesn't matter and you can't reuse items, that's the weird one. One of my students calls it chaos. It's when order doesn't matter. It's, that's the strange thing. So if order mattered, and I was picking three people out of four, then this would be all different ways we could, I could pick them. But if order doesn't matter, then all of a sudden, this is just one. Because it's just those three people, and you know, it's just those three people. So this would be one way, this would be a second way, third way, and the fourth way, right? You're just picking three people. Um, how do we get from this 24 down to this, just four different ways of choosing three? Because there's, there's six ways of arranging these three people. So we take the, the you know, 4P3 and we divide by, or we take this, you know, 4 times 3 times 2 and we divide by the duplicates. How many ways you can arrange three people, three factorial? So, um, if I can get a spot here. All right, so for example, uh, who's ever been to a, a horse race? Anybody? All right, so there's one that you can make, which is called show. So you pick three horses, there's eight horses in the race or ten horses in the race, you pick three horses to show. That means that they come in first, second, and third in any order. Doesn't matter which one's first, second, or third, just those, you just pick the top three. So in, in that case, I don't care what order they're in, I just care that they're the top three horses. 
Um, so first I find the, the probability of, of, you know, how many options are there for first place? Eight. I'm picking three horses. How many options for second? Seven. How many options for third? Six. But since order doesn't matter, doesn't matter which one came in first, second, or third amongst them, then I need, I have to, whether it's, so imagine I've, um, you know, I've chosen, you know, Stormy Rider, and I've picked, I don't know, Halloween Sunset and Mikhail's Ghost, whatever, right? It doesn't matter what order they come in, whether it's Stormy, Pumpkin, and Mikhail, or Mikhail and Pumpkin and Stormy, it doesn't matter which way, which, which, or, which order they're in. So instead of there being this many ways, possible you know, ways of, of um, combinations, um, picking them, I need to divide out the duplicates since, you know, what was it, Stormy, Halloween, Mikhail is the same thing as Mikhail, Stormy, Halloween. So I need to divide by the number of ways I can arrange those three horses. How many ways can you arrange three horses? Three times two times one. And that's a nice thing is that if you draw out your lines and put your numbers in, then that tells you how many spots to put. I got three spots, three, two, one, done. Super easy. Good. And so I think I did that, and I think I got like, I, I bet like $2. That's was with my dad, I was in college, right? Well, this little sorority thing at the, the horse race. And I won like 52 bucks for $2, it was pretty awesome. Um, actually, I think I, put, I just picked the two horses to come in first and second. I don't know what that is, it's some other bet. Uh, all right, so, um, so yeah, so that's how you do it. So the way that my student describes this, what am I, you know, that the best way that I've heard it is, it's chaos, right? So a regular, a regular um, problem, you pick, you pick three horses and you put you or you know, and you put one here, first place. You put another one here. Put another one there. You put them in specific spots, or you assign them specific duties, right? But if you just grab them like chaperones. Or like in this case, I just need three horses, and it, it and you, she says like it's like you put them into bins, and they can roll around in the bin, and go wherever they want. It doesn't matter what order they're in, bless you. But it just those three horses are in the bin. Does that kind of make sense? So she thinks of it as chaos. They're kind of moving around wherever they want. And the thing about it, um, what the what Andrea had said is she thinks it as chaos. There's more numbers. You got numbers on top, and you got numbers on bottom. So because you got numbers on top and on the bottom, that's more chaotic, chaos. So you have chaos, that's when you, that's when you, have, more, you have more numbers to deal with. And so just the numbers on top, you also have numbers on the bottom. So that helps her think, remember how to connect those ones, all right? So when order doesn't matter, it's chaotic, right? They're all running all where they want. And because of that, you have, it's chaotic, you have more numbers, you have numbers on the top, and you also have to divide stuff out on the bottom. Okay. So in light of that, why don't you guys take a minute? Um, oh wait. Well, okay, yeah. I'll do. I'll do an example with you guys. All right. So, advertising executive has has to pick four different photographs. So she's selecting four items. So I'm going to draw four lines. How many options for? She has nine photographs to work with. Doesn't matter what order they're in. She's picking nine. So how many options for her first spot? Nine. Nine. Next spot? Eight. Eight. Come on. There we go. Next spot? And last spot? Great. But because it's chaos, doesn't matter what order the picture's in, four items divide by four times three times two times one. Done. Good? Yeah. All right. So um, you guys have quiz problem number four and five. So why don't you guys sort through four and five and figure out what to do with those problems. They're not necessarily the same problem, but, those, but these two problems will be problems that we've seen any of the one, problems we've seen in the past. It may not be the same one, just as a, as a warning. So if you're home and you haven't done this, go ahead and pause your video. Um, so I think it, hopefully I'll make it things clear a little bit. So the first one, how do I see the person select eight minute tapes from ten tapes? The, first, the question you want to ask is, okay, so I'm selecting eight, so I'm going to draw eight lines. Drawing eight lines. 
throwing them into a bin. Doesn't matter what they can mix around in there any way they want. So order doesn't matter. It's chaos. Remember chaos, you gotta divide out the duplicates. So I have the extra step. I pick eight things. Divide by eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you'll notice a bunch, a bunch of them cancel out. Right? Then it's really just ten times nine over two times one. 45, perfect. Now, the next one is, how much can you reward first, second, third from a group of seven contestants? I did just, I just this purposely to fool you. How many options for the first spot? Seven. Next. Six. Next. Five. And so just so you don't automatically just do whatever I showed you to everything problem every after I show you how to do an example, without blindly just do it, here's the question. Does order matter here? Yes. Yeah. Does it matter when you come in first or second? Yes. Yes. Order matters. You're done. Just multiply them. That's it. That's not chaotic. Okay. Two hundred ten. All right. How do you know when it's a permutation and combination? That's the hard part. So you know it's a permutation combination when you have one pool of items and you and you can't reuse them. So this is different. You guys, this is. Do you guys want a minute? Do you guys need a minute to talk about things? You guys agree? Okay. So this is different than the shirts, shoes, pants thing because there I have shirts. I'm just picking a shirt and then I'm not picking it from that group. Picking pants and then I'm ignoring the rest of that bid. This is, I have the same bin, I keep going back to the same bin and picking from the same bin over and over again. Right, this is like if I pick four shirts and I have a giant bin of shirts I pick from the same bin over and over again. Right, this, that's, that's a permutation combination. You have one pool and you keep re-picking from that same pool and you cannot reuse items. Um, how do you know when it's a permutation versus a combination? Again, think about it is when you select each one, are you putting it in a specific place or assigning you know, a, a name or a job to it, like the spots where it be like as if assigning a position, like um, first, second, third, assigning a, um, a a name, like if I pick three cats, and no matter what, the first cat's gonna get called Misty, the second pack, cat I pick is gonna be called Walter. Did anybody see Walter the cat in the Olympics over the summer? No one saw Walter the cat? You're kidding me. <laughs> Alright, second one's Walter. A third one, no matter you know what, is called, I don't know, spot. Whatever, right? Then, then order matters. Because if you get picked first, you're called Misty. You get called picked last, you're called spot. Do you, do you guys see what I'm saying? Or or another one would be like assigning positions. If I did if I'm just picking a team, I'm the coach, I'm picking a team. You, you 11 players are going to start the next game. Then order doesn't matter. But if I say, I'm going to pick you 11, you're going to start at goalkeeper. You're going to start at sweeper. You're going to start at stopper. You're going to start at left half, right? That sort of stuff. Then order matters because you're picking them. The first one goes in the goal. The second one goes in the stop and sweeper. You guys see what I'm saying? You're giving them a position or a spot or a job. If I said, you know, you're first chaperone, you're going to sweep up. You know, sweep the floors. Second one, you're gonna, I don't know, count the whatever. Yeah. I was a little confused by that last example you did. So you said if you're like assigning like positions like on the on the field or yep. something, that order matters, right? Yep, then order matters. If the first one I pick becomes the goalkeeper, the second one I pick becomes the sweeper, the third one I pick becomes the stopper. Okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, 
Good. Because yeah, because then because then having ways can you choose a team in that in those in those positions? Then then all of a sudden order matters. Then it matters whether Stevie is pitching or Johnny's pitching. Right. right? Those are those are different if I if I say that. Yeah. Okay. Good. And, the, and if you're throwing the ball into a bin and moving around, it's chaos, right? So it's that way. So um, this is another way of kind of thinking of it, right? Um, and again, we're not going to worry about this until later. This is 4.5. All right, so um, the multiplication rules and conditional probability. Um, so remember, multiplication is and, right? So first of all, ors. Ors means what? Ors we add. Ors we what? Add. add. Um, let's, let's, let's do this way. Um, I go to the Warriors game. And at the halftime show, they pick, they pick me and they say, OK, you can win the Steph Curry shirt if you Shoot a free throw and make a free throw. Okay, so there's that probability. What if they said, you win the Steph Curry shirt if you shoot the free throw or if you make the layup? Which gives you a better chance of winning? The, 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 the or, right? One or the other. It gives, you, it gives you two shots at winning. Do you, do you guys see what I'm saying? What if he said, you get the shirt if you make the free throw and you make the layup? Is that easier or harder than just shooting the free throw? Harder. It's harder because you have to do both, right? And means you have to do both. It's harder. So and is smaller. It's less likely. Or is bigger. It's more likely. That's why you ask. Adding makes things, makes your probabilities larger. Multiplying probabilities makes them tinier, right? Because they're all less than one. So when we multiply decimal, these decimals less than one, it makes them smaller. So it's another way of kind of remembering. Um, so, and you multiply, or as you add. Did you guys all write this above on the little piece of paper and tape it above your bed? Make sure you do that. You got three days left to remember that. All right. Um, so, the probability of A and B is if it's independent, it's just multiply the probability. Probably A times probability of B. If it's dependent, then you take the probability of A. So, now you've taken a step towards A. Now, from A, the probability of B given A has happened, right? Because A has already happened. So the probability of B given A. Um, so that's, and, and I would kind of stick with, with, with assuming it's dependent in general, because that will just make things, I think, a lot. Uh, you can always use that second one, actually. OK, so here's the key part. The other thing that's really hard, probability of getting at least one is the same as one minus probability of getting none. Either I have no siblings, okay, let me phrase that. Either I have at least one sibling or I have no siblings. No siblings. Those are complements of each other, it's one or the other. All right, either I have at least one job or I have no job, right? It's an either or. So those two to added together make up oh. all the possibilities. They're the complements. So if you add the probabilities, they darn well better add up to 1 or 100%. So very often, it's a lot easier to find. We want to know at least one, probably of at least one. It's a lot easier to find the probability of none and subtract that from 1. So here, I want to find the probability of at least 1, 4 out of 3 rolls. It's hard to find that because it could be, it could be Four, no, no. It could be not a four, then a four, then a, then not a four. It could be not a four, then not a four, then, then a four. Or it could be, then that's just for one roll, right? Then you got to figure out how many ways there are rolling two rolls and everything, two fours and everything else. So it gets complicated. But no fours are really easy. None and all are super easy to calculate. You don't even need a tree for it because there's only one way of getting all. I mean, yes, yes, yes. 
There's only one way of getting none. No, no, and no. So no fours, that means not a four, and not a four, and not a four. So not a four is, probably I roll a four is one six. So probably I don't roll a four is five six. So I need to do that three times. So five six to the third power. That's probably of no fours. One minus that would be the probability of at least one four. Oops. Okay. So that's going to be. Um, so here's your quiz problem number six. So six and seven have to do with that idea of, of all or none or at least one. So um, I'll tell you guys what, let's do this. Um, um, work, okay, let's take a break for 10 minutes. We'll come back, oh, whoa, oh, oh, I'm not done yet. We'll come back at 23 after. If you have finished it, six and seven, then take another five minute break. If you have not finished it, then come back at Eight, it was 18, sorry, 20, yeah, tw come back at 23 after and you'll have five minutes to work on it. And at home, you should take a break right, so and finish it. Finish it. Okay, yeah. hey, so let's go ahead and take a look at this, guys. Girls, folks, I'm oh, sorry. When, again, when I should say, if I say guys or girl or whatever, just to stop me and say Ms. Young. Folks, people, yeah. people. All right. All right, so you guys ready, Pete? I, I'm trying to be gender neutral. I need to be gender neutral, and that's not common. Okay, I need to so folks. All right, so no fours. No fours means I have out of four, no fours out of five rolls, right? Everybody understand what I'm saying? Okay, so that means that the first one's not a four. So that means that means it's probably a no and no and no. How many of these? Five. Five of them. So the first one's out of four. What's probably the first one's out of four? Five. Five. Five, five out of six. six. And you're going to do this five times. So you're going to do it to the mm -hmm. fifth power. Okay. Right. Or you can just do five, six times five, six. I'm, I'm fine with doing either way. Right here. I'll write it, I'll write it this way, too. Five, six, times five, oh, six. Six sides of this. Times five, six. Times five, six. Going five to the six. Five, six to the fifth. And you guys got what for that? Point four, zero, two. Four, zero, two? Yeah. Sounds good. Probably at least one, four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's take a look. So either I had a four or not a four, right? Four or not a four. Oh, I do not want to do five rolls. find all those, calculate all of them, and add them all up. Because those have all at least one four, one four or more. Or I just find the probability of having no fours, just this one possibility, and subtract it from one to get all the rest. Which one's easier? The one subtracted. That's way easier. Right? The other one will take you probably half an hour out of your exam to calculate all of that. It's crazy. This one will take you two minutes. Actually, probably less. Probably take sixty seconds, right? So, so all you gotta do is find the probability that none of them have fours, 
and subtract from one to find the probability that at least one of them has a four. So that's kind of what we did. We already calculated the probability that none of them has a four. It's right here. So at least one means the complement, the rest of them, right? If none of them, if then at least one four would be the rest of them, 0 0.598. like they totally understand the, how these two work together. Okay, who feels like they sort of get it, kind of, and then who feels like I am just so lost in this part? Okay, so I'm not getting an answer from everybody. Um, okay, so I, I, no one seems to indicate that they were having a lot of trouble, so I'm just going to work and then move on, I guess. Um, would it help you guys to talk to neighbors about it for a minute? Yeah. Sure. Okay, you can talk to neighbors. Um, and Veronica, Veronica's over here as well. Okay, so you see what you were saying earlier.